Hey, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because I have a great guest on the show today, and this is Coach Megan. She is an amazing person, and she has such wonderful information to share with us today. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. We're going to talk about stress during the holidays, and we're going to talk about self-love and self-care and the importance of putting yourself first. But before we begin, I just want to do a quick shout out to dmaworld.com. dmaworld.com is a marketing consultant agency who tries to help the small businesses become big businesses. They don't want you to get scammed by those big companies who charge a fortune. So go to dmaworld.com where Mark, the owner, is there and he would love to talk to you and help you with your business and help you grow. So once again, it's dmaworld.com. Now, Megan, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. And why don't you tell everybody about yourself and tell them a little about who you are and what you do. Thank you so much, Stacey. I'm really excited to be here. It's 5 a.m. on Saturday morning in Sydney, and I am feeling quite sprightly because I had a great sleep. (laughs) (laughs) So thanks for having me. Um, So I am the Overwhelm Coach. So I work with women in business and I I help them and work with them on their journey of setting boundaries, getting clear about their own well-being, what strategies can they put in place so that their well-being becomes their priority and uh, and a lot of things in between. So, um, and I help them to then overcome their overwhelm because it's it's a very big thing for women in business. And and any type of business, I work with women that are C-suite executives. I work with women who are solopreneurs, mums who are starting up businesses. You know, my range is very big, but a woman working in business can feel overwhelmed regardless of where they are. Yes. And so I, I just love being on the journey of coaching women it's just such I feel blessed and and it's and it's an incredible journey to be on so I'm a I'm a certified health and wellness coach I am also an energy healer so some of my clients like me to include the energy healing in their coaching as well I'm also a coach and a practitioner with neurotransformation therapy and I have a 20 plus year career in human resources so Every day of my life in my career, I've coached or mentored someone someone in some way, a lot of leaders, employees, countless uh, clients. And, and yeah, I just, it, it's, it's a beautiful journey to be on. I'm also a, I, I say I'm obsessed with um, mental health. It's mm-hmm. something that is very, very uh, important to me. Yeah. And here in Australia, we are, we have, people called mental health first aiders Mm -hmm. and so it's it's a little bit like when you do your first aid training but this is for mental health so it's it's a it's a training that you get it's a two-day training and you need to requalify every two years but it's a training that we learn so that we can start to identify the signs of if someone is not in a great mental health space And it teaches you how to approach them, uh, questions to ask, and and then to help them get the help. So we're not there to actually then counsel them. We're there to identify it, ask them, and then and and to help them get the help. So it's a it's an interesting process to go through. the The training is quite deep, um, but it's also a great responsibility as well. But it really does help you because you really start to see and think about people differently when when they're not in a great place yeah. and how can you help them. So, yeah, that's that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> that's amazing. You know, I, I find it so um, rewarding when the people, you know, especially women like yourself, focus on other women in in the corporate industry or the business industry, because we, you know, we tend to be mothers or we tend to have families and we have a spouse or a partner. And, you know, you're trying to balance a a very big life, you know, personal life. And then you're trying to be successful in your business and whatever occupation you may do. And it's very hard sometimes to balance the two. And 
And sometimes with the stigmatism and the labelism in society, it's sometimes women feel like they have to prove themselves. So they work even twice as hard to show that, you know, at, at, to get to that point where they're recognized or they feel recognized. And at the same time, they're getting very drained and they're focusing mm -hmm. so much on their family and on their work that they're forgetting about themselves and they're forgetting about taking care of themselves and they tend to neglect themselves. And you can see that in sometimes in women because you can see the drainness or they start to gain weight or they're very tired looking and, and they're just, you know, they just seem like they're just not with it, you know, and it's affecting them mentally, physically, spiritually. And, mm -hmm. you know, what do you see? suggest for women like that like what do you see in your in your world you know with women who are trying to balance both worlds and having a hard time mm. it's a great question um stacy and it's interesting because all of the clients that i've worked with up until now everybody is different and so i always go into a new coaching process with a client with open eyes i yeah. learn so much from my clients that's what i love about it too it's, it's yeah. amazing and for me also i don't have children so i am always very mindful of when i'm coaching a client it's always led by them because yes i have i have time i have the luxury of time because i don't have children right but for a woman who is trying to work in work and run a household and has got a lot of children the the tips that i could give her won't necessarily work because I've got the luxury of time and she doesn't. Yeah. So I think I it's really interesting that we talked about that as women, we we try to be everything to everybody. And yeah. I don't know whether it's just in our DNA. I'm not sure. I don't know whether it's because we've been conditioned to. But I also think that we're not great at asking for help. Yeah. Or we're not great at putting our hand up and saying, I need help. I need support. Yeah. We just have this, this intensity of just taking more and more on and thinking that we need to do it all. Yeah. And actually we don't like we, we actually don't. Right. And I, and it's really interesting because up until now I've been doing a lot of one, like all my coaching has been one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm now shifting into the group coaching world as well as one-on-one. -on -one. Because I'm finding that women, particularly who are feeling overwhelmed, love to feel like they're part of a tribe, mm -hmm. want to feel like they're part of a community. Yeah. And for me, I'm very aware that I don't have children. I'm very aware that I don't know what that world is like from a personal point of view. Yeah. And I find that my group coaching programs is wonderful because when I have the women in the room, they can then start to swap stories of this is how I felt. Oh, actually, I felt like that too, but this worked for me. Yeah. And so I love that actually I'm there facilitating and I'm kind of sitting back and just actually just helping them. And they start to heal together, which is really beautiful. Yeah. So I think it's really interesting because I'll, I'll give you an example. I was working with a beautiful client earlier this year. She's a doctor. She has a beautiful husband who has had some serious health issues in the past and she's got two young boys. And when she started coaching with me, she was saying to me, I need to do something in the morning because the mornings are crazy. The boys are crazy. I feel stressed. The, the house is crazy. But the interesting thing is, is that she had this idea in her head that she had to, had to get up at 5.30 every morning so that she could meditate, she could journal, she could da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And even when I was listening to her, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm overwhelmed with what you're putting the expectation on yourself about. Yeah. But she she had this idea that if she did all of those things in the morning, then the, the morning would run smoothly. But through the coaching program, through the 12 weeks that we work together, what we do is – they're goals, but I call them experiments because actually you don't know whether it's going to work or not. Let's yeah. experiment this week. Let's try that. Why don't, you know? And so through the process, she was experimenting timing and she realized that her sweet spot was actually 6.30. And so she found that she was naturally waking up at that time. Yeah. And because she was naturally waking up at that time, she was feeling calmer. She still had time to be able to do all of those other things. 
But it was really interesting that once she took the pressure off herself and started to work out what works for her and not what she thought worked for her, Right now in the morning she's got the time. And she said it's really lovely because when she gets up, the lunches are made, she's relaxed, the boys get up, the house is really calm. So it's I love and she just had this real aha moment, this mm-hmm. real wow, all of this time I've been putting all this pressure on myself and I've been getting up at that time and it's not been working. And it's wonderful to see that once we start to work out what works well for us, and that's why I I can't be, I, I can't tell you what's going to work. You need to work that out yourself. I'm happy to help you and to coach you through it. Yeah. But we're all different. Whereas somebody else might come to me and the 5 o'clock or the 5.30 might be their sweet spot. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really interesting. So once she took that pressure off herself, worked out what worked well for her, her mornings now are incredible and she's 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 shining. Like every time I speak to her, she's really happy and the boys are happy and her husband has noticed a huge difference in her, which has taken pressure off him because he wasn't well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, really, really, really interesting in, in the way that that. I can work with the women um, in those sort of situations. Yeah. And you know, mm. that that's another stress is, is being a caretaker also, you know, that puts mm. a lot of stress on a, a person. Mm. Now, when people get into habits, it's very hard to break habits. Like for that woman example, she had a regiment that she followed every single day. And a lot of times as, as any human being, when you get into these regiments, it's very hard to break them. What are your mm. suggestions on how to break habits and, and start to reconstructing your life into a be- maybe a better, more resourceful way that will be beneficial for you, both mentally, physically, and spiritually? It's, it's, a, it's about experimenting and what works for you. Yeah. So, you know, if, if we want to talk about from a physical point of view, when I was younger, I loved the gym and the hard exercise and those sort of things. But as I've gotten older, actually, that does not interest me at all. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm a walker. I love getting up early. I get up at 5.30 in the morning and I do probably an, at least an hour walk every morning. And then I have my breakfast and I start my day. Yeah. But that that sets my day up. That right. walk, oh, so I'll listen to something. I might listen to a podcast, something inspiring. And then I've got a spot in my track that I walk around here because I'm in, I'm in a place in Sydney called Lane Cove. So it's really bushy and leafy. It's beautiful. And so I have a spot about halfway through my walk where I see this certain tree and I take my headphones out and then I start to do some work on myself so I do my gratitude I have a process um, I do some healing on myself I put my intentions out there for the day um, and I do that and then once I've done that then I then I usually listen to some music at the end so I have a bit of a routine so from a physical point but the walking works for me Mm -hmm. but it's taken me a long time to actually just accept that actually, you know what, I get a lot of benefit out of the walking, the movement, my body loves it, it's low impact, but from a mental health point of view, a a mental point of view for me, it's really important. And so I think that it's about finding what you're really passionate about. Now, I am, I I don't mind yoga, but Mm -hmm. I'm a type of person that if I'm doing it all the time, I actually get bored with it because- The, t- the particular yoga I do, it's the same all the time. And, and you know, so I, I don't do it as much, but yeah. I also don't put that pressure on myself either. And mm-hmm. I think that that's the thing. Try something, but give it a good go. Don't just try it for a couple of days, maybe try it for a week. So if you're trying something, a, a new routine, maybe something about food or if you want to bring in some meditation or, you know, um, any type of change, give it a good go, but then really think, is this because I'm resisting it that I don't like it or is it just because I actually don't like it? Yeah. And just try lots of different things. Talk to people and ask them what works for them. Right. And you'll finally, you finally, when you, when you release the pressure, you surrender to it. Yeah. I think then you start to find what actually works for you. Yeah. And I also, I'm a, I'm a big person about intention. So if you put the intention out there that you want to find 
I don't know, maybe a, a, a meditation group or a new way to exercise, often then something will pop up on your feed or someone will randomly talk to you about something yeah. and you think, oh, my gosh, I was just talking about that. <laughs> yeah. And just trust that it will come to you. Yeah. Right. That's mm. excellent advice. And, you know, I always found that, you know, that it's it's very hard, I think, for um for people to um to do to find what works for them. But once they start experimenting and they start really figuring out, and I always say maybe journal, keep a list mm. of, you know, and, and start really seeing who you are because sometimes when we journal we actually realize things that we didn't realize before and create little little things of what you enjoy what you have gratitude for what you really like about yourself your strengths your weaknesses and then maybe put together some type and formulate some type of of you know regiment that's really productive for you you know, but one thing I liked before our conversation that it really struck me is when you mentioned about putting yourself first, and then you started talking about the holidays. I, I felt like, oh, this is a topic we really need to touch base on because I feel like a lot of people neglect themselves and they actually feel shame or guilt by mm -hmm. putting themselves first when they, in order to help others, you need to help yourself first. And I don't mm -hmm. think many pe people, you know, realize that and they feel mm -hmm. shameful or guilty when they try to put themselves first. And so they don't. And then they end up wearing themselves down. And, and you mentioned about the holidays and how the holidays is, is so stressful for some people because they're always focusing on everybody else. So maybe mm -hmm. you can touch base about that, about maybe mm -hmm. not feeling so much shame or guilt. And it's OK to put yourself first and maybe talk a little about the holidays. Because I thought that was a great topic when you started talking about that earlier. Sure, sure. One of the things that I work with with my clients immediately is about boundaries. So where are your boundaries? How strong are your boundaries? I am a, I'm a big boundary person. Uh, it's taken me a long time to get there. Yeah. But if you don't have strong boundaries in place, uh, you know, people are going to take advantage of you. There's going to be huge expectations. And the interesting thing that I've learned over the years is the more boundaries I've put in place, do you know what? The sun rises still every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've still got friends. I've still got family. I've had some people that have fallen away through the process because they don't like the boundaries that I've put in place. Yes. But then that's actually been a, 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 uh, a trigger for me to think, hmm, okay, well, maybe they were a bit of a taker and I was just giving to them and, and they needed me more than I needed them. Yeah. And so, you know, as humans, when people fall away as friends or some family members, of course we feel sad because we're humans. Like if you yeah. don't feel sad, then then maybe there's, there's something else wrong with you. Yeah. Um, or actually it could be a relief. Sometimes if you don't feel sad, you actually think, oh, my goodness, I didn't realise how much of that that person was taking my energy. Yeah. So boundaries are really important. And I think if, the, if you're surrounded by people who truly love you and understand you, then you can always be open and honest. And yeah. so I'll give you an example for this year. So my husband has had a particularly big, big year. He... Um, he He's in corporate, he's got a very, very senior role and he's had a really, really big year and he's not had much time off through the year. He needs a break. Mm. And I, I've I've had a big year, but, you know, I've managed myself quite well. He's not been that great with managing himself. So this year for Christmas, so I'm the youngest of six, massive family, like huge family, and we always get together at Christmas time. Yeah. But this year he and I are going away. We're going up to a friend's farm. They're going away, so we're going up to the farm and we're going to look after the farm for a couple oh, of weeks. nice. Because we just need to get away, and particularly him, he just needs the time to just stop and to just not have to feel obligated to be talking to people all the time and we're going here and such and such is doing this. And so I just said to my family, look, we've had the opportunity to go and look after our friend's farm. You know what? There, there are a lot, there's, they said, well, we'll miss you, but okay, that's, not that that's okay, but just, yeah. okay, we'll miss you. And 
we just we needed to do that. I knew that if we didn't, he would be not in a great place at the beginning of the year. And I don't want him to do that. I don't want him to start yeah. that. So the boundaries, I think, are really important. And, you know, I think if we, I was on another podcast this week and we were talking about technology, having healthy boundaries with technology. And I was talking about the fact that through Christmas, in like the holiday season, if we are so obsessed with our technology, we miss what's actually going on in the present. Yes, very true. We miss, we miss conversations. We miss kids doing silly things and saying silly things and kids enjoying the joy of Christmas and, and, and adults enjoying the joy of Christmas and celebrating. And so I think that if you can, look, I know that sometimes we have obligations to families and it's very, very difficult to say we can't come, but yeah. maybe limit your time. Maybe limit your time for where you're going. Or if you've got so many things that are going on in a week, try to balance them out and say to someone, look, we really want to catch up with you, but Monday is so busy for us. How is Tuesday for you? Ask yeah. the question. I think that have that have that courage and that bravery to actually have a conversation with someone. Yeah. Because honestly, nine times out of ten, they're going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we put this pressure on ourselves that, oh, no, I can't ask that person or I can't do this because they'll be really upset. Honestly, at the end of the day, I don't want to, I don't say this disrespectfully, but at the end of the day, a lot, a lot of the time, no one cares. People are so involved in themselves. It's true. That actually you ask them the question, they're like, okay, yeah, great. Tuesday works well for me. Right. So I think it's, it's that sitting, having a moment of, being present, being present. Oh my gosh. The more present we can become, yeah. the more joy and happiness we can have in life. Oh, for sure. But we can also being present, realize where we are in ourselves. And so there, there's a, there's a joy and a happiness, but sometimes you can get aha moments when you're present as well. Yeah. Cause you think, Hmm, it's the end of the week. I've done all of these things for so many other people and I've not looked after myself. Exactly. So yeah, so some boundaries, try to put some boundaries in place and then just yeah, just find some moments. And and one of the I was listening to something the other day, I can't remember who said it to me, but she said, Oh, I was at a family thing and I knew I knew this one person would trigger me. And she said, and they did. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she said, so I just toddled off and I went and unpacked the dishwasher and packed the dishwasher. And as I was doing that. Then I calmed down and I, you know, got back to my normal place. So right. maybe if there's some things and some energy going around, maybe walk outside. I know it's cold for everybody in the US, but mm -hmm. have have that cold in the face might snap you out of how you're feeling right. to come back in. So just find little moments of where you can just take a moment for yourself. And I actually think that really helps. I think that's great. I think that's great. You know, I, I know that you have a passion for helping people with mental health. Maybe you could talk a little about that because you mentioned that you created a tool that's very useful in that area mm -hmm. and that could help many people. So maybe you could talk a little about your passion for mental health and the tool that you created that's been very successful and helped hundreds of people. Absolutely. Thank you. So in 20, 20, uh, 2014, I was not in a great place myself. I was dealing with divorce. My ex-husband was in a new relationship. I was single. I was still single. Uh, I had some financial things going on. But the biggest thing for me at the beginning of that year was that we had lost my mum both suddenly and unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And so oh. toward the end of the year, the grief was the overwhelm was yeah. huge and the grief was a big part of that and I had a moment one night where I was in a really dark place and I, I was I was seriously contemplating whether I would continue on with my life or not yeah. and my I had a moment where my beautiful mother turned up in an energy form she turned up in this beautiful she was this beautiful bright white light I knew it was her immediately because of her energy and she led me down my driveway out of my lounge room into, sorry, not my drive, my, my, my hallway into my bedroom. 
And her energy calmed me. I stopped crying. I started to get a little bit more clarity. And I knew if she was physically standing there, she would be saying, like, it's okay. You're going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Right. And as I calmed myself down and started to sit there and think, I had, there was this one moment that I thought, oh my goodness, only I can get myself out of this situation. Yeah. Only I can lead myself out of where I'm feeling. Right. It's someone else can't tell me I have to. It's got to be me. It sits with me. And as I thought about that and I thought of the word lead, I then thought, hang on a minute. (laughs) I thought I've got 20 odd years of experience working in human resources and every day I talk about leadership. Every day I talk about leaders and their leadership. And I thought I've got this huge toolkit and I've, I opened it up and I had all these strategies in there about how I could help myself. Yeah. And so that's why I came up with the, the tool called Leading Self, S-E-L-F-F. And so I started to use it and work on it with myself. And so that's why I want to share it today. So the, the Leading Self, so the S is for sense. So when you're in a moment, in an overwhelm moment, sense so sense what's going on for you what are you sensing yeah. what what can you hear what could you see um you know have you got spots in your eyes or is your ear ringing or have you got a really bad taste in your mouth possibly yeah. or have you got a feeling in your stomach that just something just doesn't feel right like sense what what's going on what what's happening to you right then the e is for emotion So what emotion are you dealing with at that time? Now, for me, I had many emotions going on, but my biggest emotion at that that night was grief. So I identified that, okay, it's probably tonight I've got to deal with, I've got to start thinking about what what the grief is. So it was, and I find that if you can name an emotion, you own it because it's it's got an identity and also it's giving you something to work with. Yeah. So you've got S for sense, E for emotion. Then the L is for learn. So what I did is I started to learn everything I could about every emotion that I was dealing with. So learn first, what does it do to your body? What are the positives? What are the negatives? What effect did that emotion that you're feeling have on your body itself? Like physically, what does it do? But then the other part of the learn is, okay, so I'm dealing with, grief, anger, frustration, what help can I get? Like what's out there? YouTube it, Google it, find what type of help you can get. Speak to your doctor, speak to friends. Mm -hmm. Is there community groups around you that say, is there there community grief counselling groups? Is there, you know, learn everything that you can about what tools you can put in your little toolkit or your backpack or your handbag Mm -hmm. Um, to help you with that emotion. And then the FF is future focused. So when that emotion comes up again, what's in your toolkit? Right. What strategies can you put in place and what have you learned about that emotion that can help you to deal with that emotion as as it's happening? And so I find, you know, I, I find I hear a lot that people say, oh, um, you know, just get over it or you'll be fine or just move on. But actually we need to feel it. Like yeah. we're, we're humans. We're, you know, we're having a spiritual experience in a human body. We need to feel what's going on. Yeah. But what I say is just don't unpack your bag and stay there. So yeah. if you're feeling that emotion, do, you know, what, what's your tools? How can you help with it? What can you do? Is what your what is all the strategies and the things that you've learned helping yes and then what you find is the overwhelm starts to get less because Mm -hmm. you can start to move through and go okay I'm feeling this so for me when I'm in group when I'm feeling grief yeah because I've lost my mum and my dad now when I'm feeling grief my ear rings so I I get a ringing in my ear and I'm like "Mm, okay I've got a ringing in my ear what did I just hear what has triggered that emotion that of grief okay so I sit with it and I I cry. Sometimes I cry. I might laugh about it. D- 
depending on what the the memory is. Yes. But I I move through it a lot quicker than what instead of just staying there. And so what I've found over the years is I've been in I've become incredibly in tune with my body and who I am. Yeah. Because that self awareness and that awareness of self. Yes. Is it just becomes so strong because you're constantly working on what's going on in your body yeah. and what's going on for you emotionally and and so it's 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 a really simple it's it's quite simple to use. Yeah. The work that you need to do on yourself sometimes isn't that simple. Right. <laughs> um but if you want to go on a journey of, you know, helping yourself and healing some of the things that you're dealing with, then you've got to expect that it's not going to be an easy journey. Yeah. But it's a really lovely tool that people can just, you know, S-E-L-F-F, okay, great, you know, and 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 just start with, okay, well, I've got one emotion coming up. What am I sensing? And start with that, you know, and next yeah. time you feel it, maybe go into the what the emotion is. But um, I I feel like it's easy. It's it's a tool for adults to use. Teach your children how to use it as well. I think that anybody could really use it. It's not exclusive to just adults. I think if children could start to tune in and start to feel what they're feeling as well, I actually think it would help as well. Oh yes, totally. I love it. I love it. Mm. You know, people don't realize, but once you start understanding yourself and you understand your body and you understand, you know, your, your, I say it's a connection, your mind, body, and soul, but once you understand the connection and you understand who you are as a person and everything that's going on, you could so much heal yourself faster and move forward. It's amazing. And it is in the beginning, it, it's hard because once you're, you, you're going through that process, I feel like a lot of repressed emotions come up, a lot of things come up and that's a painful period. But once you get over that hump, I feel like, wow, it's like a relief. It's just like everything is just like taken away. And it's just an amazing feeling. It's just an amazing feeling. And I, I love that you do that. Now, you also said you did group coaching where you have a group of people that come on with you and you're coaching them and everyone's given their input. And you were saying how, how beneficial and how amazing it is. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, so it's something new that I've just started recently and it's really lovely because the I go through when when someone does one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and look group coaching isn't for everybody. Some people yeah. don't like group coaching and that's okay. Some people prefer just the one-on-one, -on -one. but I have a 12-week program that I take all my clients through. And you won't be surprised that the first week we talk about boundaries <laughs> mm -hmm. because if you don't have strong boundaries in place, then all the other work that we do through this program, it, it won't work. Yeah. If, you, if you, you've got people that are taking your energy and you're not prioritizing yourself, it's yeah. just not going to work. So we, we deal with, we, we look at boundaries. We, one of the, in, in the first few weeks, we look at awareness of self. So not self-awareness, but awareness of self, because yeah. I, what I do is I help them to step back, take a step back and actually view yourself from a different place. Yes. And I'm not talking about then spiritually or anything. It's just, you know, have a think, you know, if you can step back and think, okay, what, what, what are you seeing? What are you looking at? And it's really interesting because there's a lot of aha moments there where they do see that they're actually at the bottom of their list, at the bottom of their priority list. Um, so we do that. Uh, we talk about courage and bravery mm -hmm. because you need courage and bravery to be putting the boundaries in place and saying no to things and actually saying no to other people before you say yes to yourself. Yeah. And so you need the courage and bravery. We look at self-care. Um, there's, there's lots of things that we, so, you know, there's, a, there's, no, I, won't, I don't, I don't want to say science, but, you know, I've really thought about what do we need to work on first and then how does everything sort of work through. And so, um, we do some, like on the portal, then I'll have people that they can, you know, do some meditations and if they if they want to, they can do some, you know, I'll give them some homework each week. So then those experiments definitely come in just because we're doing yeah. group. It doesn't mean that you can't experiment. There's a couple of weeks in through the program where 
it's not anything specific that we deal with. It's more of a let's talk about how we're all going and actually who needs help with what. Right. Because, you know, if you're if you're going, okay, I'm going to become not overwhelmed, but then you're feeling overwhelmed about the course, that's not, that's not what I want. Right. So I have this natural break sort of halfway through, okay, let's just, talk, you know, let's have a general conversation and, and who needs, who needs help, who can help with that? You know, has anybody got any idea? What further help do you need from me? Um, right. You also then in, in an exclusive WhatsApp group, so they've got access to me the whole time. So mm-hmm. we can, and and that's really nice too, because people start to ask questions and a lot of the time I'll answer it, but then a lot of other people pitch in and say, oh, actually this worked for me, or yeah. you should go yeah. speak to this person or, yeah. So it's a it's a really lovely um you it really builds a tribe yeah and you know those women start to really feel supportive of each other and then naturally they start supporting themselves because they've got myself and then another group of cheerleaders around them who yeah. are cheering them on and giving them encouragement and um yeah it's it's beautiful it's a as i said i i love just being part of it yeah you know i i just love watching I get so much joy out of watching people grow and evolve and I love when they have aha moments like that even now I'm starting to get a little bit emotional because it's it's I'm just so joyous for them that they've they've cracked it you know they've had that moment because I know myself when I do coaching and I've got a few coaches in my life and when I have that moment it's just the best feeling ever because you know that something is about to shift and or you've become really aware of something that you think, yeah. oh, okay, now I can see why this has happened through my life or right. now I can see why I'm not great at prioritising myself. Yeah. And so, so by the time we get to the end of the, the program, their, their, their well-being is priority. Yes. They are the priority. And when I talk about well-being, we're talking about physically, mentally, as you said, soul, you know, spiritually, all of that sort of stuff. But the well-being is really important for them and it's and it's a priority and it, it's really lovely. I love that. I And I, I think it's so good to do uh, group coaching. I've, I've gotten, you know, I've done it myself and I feel like it, it's been so um, it, wonderful because even when you open up to a group of people, there are so many people that can, can connect and it's like, you don't feel like you're alone because so many people mm-hmm. sometimes they don't realize how many people are going through similar situations. The story might not be exactly the same, but the emotions, and there is something that one little connection can make all the difference. And it could be very rewarding because then you're, you're getting an impact from all these different individuals sharing and, and, and giving advice. And sometimes the light bulb can just go off and you've seen things, you know, from other people's perspective and it's unbiased. And, and Mm. I think that's so important. And I know there is one thing that I love that you were talking about is it's okay to say no. And you even mentioned that on your website. And I feel that is so hard for some people, like people don't know how to say no. They're afraid that they might lose the friendship or the person might not like them, or they might lose that person in their life, you know, and they're, you know, or even at work or, you know, but people are afraid to say no. And it's okay to say no. And I think sometimes by always saying yes, like you mentioned, people could take advantage of you or you could just wear yourself out to the point where, you know, it could, it could affect your health mentally and, and physically. Talk a little about that and, and, and give your perspective about how you feel about it's okay to say no, because there are a lot of people pleasers out there and their intentions are very good, but at Mm. the end they wear themselves out both mentally mm. and, and, and physically. Mm. Mm. It's interesting because when you think about boundaries, you don't really think about you being a people pleaser. Like, I think it's interesting when I hear that, I think, oh yeah, it is very much tied to to boundaries. And, and it is, I think it is that people pleasing that it's that huge expectation that you put on yourself that again, you have to be everything to everybody. Mm-hmm. And it becomes easier the more you do it, definitely, yeah. because you 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 
people, the respect, what I find is the respect that I have then around me and the people that I have around me just respect it because I just, I put my boundaries in place straight away. Yeah. And I remember about, um, it was probably about 12 years ago now, I was working in a, I was working in a, a really big IT company and I was the, I was the global head of HR. So it wasn't a, there was about 150 people in the, in the organization, but I had a team of 10 reporting into me all over the world. And so we were everywhere, um, Australia, Asia, and then we're in the UK and Bulgaria. And so what that meant was at five o'clock my time in the afternoon, Bulgaria and the UK would come online. Yeah. They would be starting their day. But from the beginning, I said to them, don't expect me to be checking my emails all through the night because right. I just physically can't do that. And no. I actually think that it's it's like why 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 do you need me to do that yeah I said I would, I will always check my emails up until about seven o'clock my time which is usually sort of their mid-morning yeah. I said but if there's something urgent that you need me for call me yeah don't send me an email call me yeah and I worked in that role for about two years and you know what I never got a call <laughs> <laughs> um, because they were, you know, I set those boundaries up from the beginning. Yes, and everybody respected that, and that was right. just what I said. This, this is what you know. This is what I'm doing, yes. and I also said to them, if something is that urgent, you shouldn't be calling me in Australia anyway. You yeah. actually, if someone's having a heart attack in the office or something's happened. Don't call me. Call, yeah. call, you know, call the ambulance. I, what can I do? Right, and so yeah, so it was straight up and and I think in business I think if we can just start to well if you if you're going into a new role it's quite easy to set those boundaries because yeah. and you know nine times 99 times out of 100 people respect them oh yeah for sure. and, and I think it's just being honest about it you know if you've got family things that you need to do or if you've got um, caring responsibilities or elderly parents or children if you're just honest about it I actually think that people are reasonable people oh, are reasonable yeah. definitely and for some reason we worry that oh I can't do that because I might lose my job well actually I don't think you will yeah um, and and if you're honest and you've got a nice relationship with the person that you're working with yeah and I think in personal relationships as I said before Sometimes you will lose friendships, but you then realize, okay, well, actually, why? If I'm putting boundaries in place and saying no, or if I'm saying I'm, I'm, the, you know, this is this is the window that you can work with me in, yeah. and they've got an issue with that, then are they really a good friend? Are they really exactly. a friend at all? Yeah. Um, and if it's family members, then really, I think you should be able to just open up and have a conversation with them. Yeah. And if they've got an issue with it, then, you know, have a think about, well, what does the relationship actually mean to me? We have this huge pressure that we have on ourselves about we're so obligated to our family. Yeah. And actually, why is that? You know, if if there's a mutual respect around everybody, then okay, that's fine. But if there's not, and if there is an un an imbalance, then actually, you know, why? Why is everybody in the family expecting you to do this, and everybody sits back and doesn't do anything? Exactly. Because we're we're allowing it as well. There's yeah. a certain part of us that actually we're allowing to be treated like that. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but, but it's, it's true. true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a it's it's a huge journey to go on about boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> it really. And the better you get at it, the quicker you become. <laughs> yes. Very true. And you and you realize straight away. And look, you know, sometimes you do still need to do some things with people that okay, you know, I've got a couple of people in my husband and I've got a couple of people in our life where we find that the the relationship is a little bit surface level like yeah. you know it, it, we don't have my husband and I love having really deep 
meaningful conversations with people. Yes. Because we get a lot out of that. We learn from them. We yeah. learn a lot about ourselves and that sort of stuff. But, you know, sometimes we'll go out with these friends. It's it's not often. And when we come home, we think, wow, you know, you we realise how the, 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 how are you? Good. How's work? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> and and you try to dig deeper and you just can't get under that. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so we just take it for what it is. We think, okay, well, we've got a night off. We don't have to worry. We don't have exactly. to be, you know, in our deep depth, th- deep thoughts. Um, Let it we go. Just, yeah. Just, just just be relaxed and just enjoy the meal with these people. So, right. um, yeah, I think it's just, it's a journey. Your boundaries are a journey. Um, and I think that you just need to be really kind to yourself when you're going through that. And I'm not yeah. saying, like, as I say, it's um, the reason I'm saying it's a journey is because you can't just snap it and just change everything. Yeah. Try one person and see how that goes and then try yeah. another person and but then another yeah. and then you just start to get really strong, strong right. with them. Hmm. That's a great idea. Now, yeah. if, you, if you had to give a couple of takeaways from everything we discussed today, what would you like to tell people, people who are really trying to balance their life, trying to prioritize their life, trying to get things in order, trying to figure out what's going on in their life and kind of, you know, they feel like a puzzle, like, a, a, you know, that you just a box that you just threw all the pieces on the floor. And now <laughs> they're just trying to put everything together. What's your, 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 your takeaway, maybe a couple of suggestions on how people can start really putting together the pieces so they could have a well-balanced and healthy life with boundaries, learn experiences, you know, having expectations and fulfilling those expectations? That's a great, great question. I think put down, like write a list of what are the things in your life that you love? What are, what are the things that are working really well? What are yeah. the things that light you up and fill you with joy? Yeah. And then write down the things that don't necessarily have that same feel. So what's draining you? What's taking your time? What 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 would you like to change? Yeah. And then start to prioritize that that list of what's not working well and what you would you like to change? And then just start with the first one. Yeah. Like even if your list is a hundred things, you physically cannot change all of that at once. Right. And so it's about and and it's about making small changes all the time so it's about okay well what's your most most priority is it boundaries okay well give yourself six months to work on your boundaries don't just think within a week you're going to have it sorted exactly and just slowly go through your list and start to work through them but give it time yeah. Don't use it just as a checklist of great in the, by the end of the year, I'm going to have all these hundred things sorted. Probably yeah. not. I mean, <laughs> I've been on my journey for, oh my goodness, probably 20 years. Yeah. Um, and I still learn every day. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm very kind to myself about when I'm making changes. And I think it's, yeah, it's, it's just that work on that one thing. When you were talking before about when we're trying to change a habit, yeah it's it's give it time you know give it some time so if you if you want to be doing more exercise in your life just concentrate on that don't Mm -hmm. then try to shift your diet and don't try to add meditation and this and this and this just start with the exercise because naturally things will happen anyway once you start to get that sorted then naturally I mean you would know this the more you exercise, the more you start to think, mm, I actually have just done some exercise. I don't want to eat that because I am I know I'm not going to feel great. I might eat that. So, you know, yeah. things naturally fall into place anyway. Exactly. So I think it's having that list and just giving yourself the time to actually make the changes and yeah. to work on yourself. And if you have a long list of 100 and you say in the next two or three years, or actually don't even give it a time. I will get through my list. Yeah. And however long it takes, it takes. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. I love And the that. other thing is, is that just take as many times as you can to be present. Mm-hmm. Just a moment, just one moment of stopping, you know, sitting here with you, you know, look out, look at the trees, the sun's rising now, it's starting to get light. But, you know, just take a moment through your day. Yeah. Um, and just, just, 
just be there what's going on you know the sense sensing what 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 you're feeling and and yeah. how you're feeling i think the more present we can be particularly you know with technology and that yeah. sort of thing i think the more beautiful moments that you'll get for and you'll you'll become really aware of yourself which i i think that 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 whole self awareness and awareness of self journey is beautiful oh so that would sure. be the two things that's excellent advice. Oh, that's excellent advice. Now, where can people find you? Where can they find you? So they can find me in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> so they can find me online. So I've got a website. So it's wellnesswhileworking.com.au. And I am on Instagram. So at wellness while working and uh, on Facebook as well. Great. And also people can also um, have your coaching services and your group coaching services online. So they don't have to be in Sydney or Australia. They could be exactly. anywhere in the world and they could, yes. you know, join your courses and join everything that you offer just from the, from the comforts of their own home. They can, they can actually converse with you and get your tools, techniques and strategy and, and learn with you and grow yeah. with you. Yeah, exactly. And what I actually offer is um, I I actually offer, it, it's called Kickstart. So it's like a two session. So we have an hour together and then we have two 30-minute sessions. And it's just a little package that people can um, sign up and we can start to work together because you don't know, like you don't know how well you're going to work with a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a, it's a very personal relationship. Yes. And so I have this small package that people can also sign up for to just for us to work together. Yeah. <clears throat> Do we have the chemistry? Is this going to work well? Yeah. And, and then a hundred percent of the time people then convert into a, to a bigger package or they sign up to the group coaching. Right. Um, and on my website too, you can book in for a discovery call. So you can just book in for 30 minutes and we can just have a conversation because before we even start working together, I think that that's really important. It is. I think that we need to know, am I, uh, for me, it's actually, am I the right person for you? Exactly. Because sometimes I may not be, um, right. you know, I can't be everything to everybody. Right. And I've spoken to people before where I've said to them, mm, I actually don't think I'm the right coach for you, yeah. but I know somebody who I could refer you to. Right. Because, you know, I, I, I'm on this journey with you and I want the aha moments with the clients and I want them to get the most out of the coaching that they can. Yeah. And if I'm not a hundred percent authentic and if I can't actually offer that for them, yeah, then I'm not going to take them on as a client and I'll refer them to somebody else. Right. Um, and that's only happened a couple of times because I'm quite, you know, my niche is I'm the overwhelmed coach. Mm -hmm. So people kind of know what I do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to get someone that's going to come to me and say, help me. I'm, I don't know, trying to have a baby or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. They do Cause they're overwhelmed. I don't know. But <laughs> you know what I mean? like, it's pretty obvious what I do. So, right. um, yeah. so they can book in for a discovery call. And then I've got this, the, the little package that I've got um, just to see whether we work well together and, and then I've got the bigger packages. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I love this. I love this. You know, I, this has been tremendous. I, I thank you so much for coming on this show. Yes. From the bottom of my heart, I hope to have you on more because you have so many different topics to, to tackle and, and we could really go into and, and really help a lot of people. So I'm, I'm, I hope you do come on the show again and I loved having you here today. Your information thank will be you. in our description box. So everybody that needs to find you will have the information in our description box. And once again, Megan, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been amazing. Thank you, Stacey. It's been such a beautiful conversation. And um, yeah, I've loved, I've loved talking to you too. And yeah, I'd love to come back. Absolutely. Because there's lots of things that you and I could talk about. So absolutely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well, you, Megan, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much thank for you. everything. Thank you. Thanks, Stacey.